This is Courtney. This is Kimberly. You are listening to the show within the show, Living on the L Edge. Come live with us. We're talking about the road to recovery and sobriety and how to vibe and maintain a happy and healthy lifestyle. Hey, welcome to the Sober Vibes podcast. I am your host, Courtney Anderson, and it is Living on the L Edge Week. <laughs> which means it's the show within the show as you could tell by the intro music you already knew what time it was but if you're new to the sober vibes world because this podcast has grown a lot over the past two months welcome 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 kimberly hey everybody what's popping kimberly ann elledge here i'm courtney's older sister more wise and mature. Oh man. So before we get into it today, we well, let me tell you about what we're going to talk about. And what's we're gonna share about finishing this year strong. All right, Kim, what's been going on in your world? Y'all know me. I'm just out here grinding. It's hard out here for a pimp. Uh, nothing, nothing just working. You gotta work right now because we're in Detroit, Michigan and our Union Brothers, a big strike going on, everybody. Big strike. So mm -hmm. whenever something's going on with the auto industry, it affects the trickle down. It affects the local economy. So yeah, we don't like that dislike button. Yeah. And I dislike it because Matthew's job, his Matthew is in design and his particular, his unit is union. So UAW. UAW. So, I mean, I feel bad for, I do feel bad for the workers because this affects a lot of factory workers and it's just, it, it's not right. You know, I mean, the things that they are asking for the most part are very fair. Yeah, it's fair. And, you know, when these CEOs start getting these huge increases and making all this money and they're selling cars at 40% more now and but the work wages have stayed the same. That's, it's not right. It's not right. I mean, the one thing that they are asking for, which I just don't see them getting, but who knows is that 32 hour work week. I just don't see that, but you never know. You just never know. I don't really understand that. Like, what the fuck are we talking about? Are you guys toddlers? Like 32, a full hour a full-time work week is, is like, like 40 hours. What do you mean? 32? Right. What are we on a yoga retreat here? Just chilling? <laughs> Fuck no. We're Detroiters building cars. Let's go. 40 hours a week. That's nuts. Yeah, but this goes into other states. The Jeep factory is in Toledo, Ohio. So it, there's just so much. Be with, But I, I think Ford came back with a with an offer. So... So it's just crazy. It's crazy. But, you know, good news is that WAG, WAG came to agreement. So good for them. I'm very happy for them. So because that one was a five month strike, man. That was What the fuck is WAG? The Writers Actor Guild. Oh, Guild, that pluses. union. Oh, I don't care about them. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Whatever. But, but I do care about the blue collar worker. Because, you know, I'm sure working in a factory, that's no bullshit. Can you imagine no. that work culture? Oh, my God. No, I cannot. I cannot. So so that's enough about union talk. Yeah, we'll <laughs> shut the fuck up on that. Um, but also, too, last time you and I spoke, we started a new series called Stories from the Streets. And I am telling you, I heard back from so many women who enjoyed that. And I loved a couple of them. What was that lady's name again? Who? The woman who was knocking on your door like the police. Oh, what the fuck was her name? I don't want to remember it because I'm going to get, was it Fatima? Fatima, yes. Yeah. So a couple fuck messages. Fatima. Yeah, a couple messages I received was fuck Fatima. For real. Thanks. Thanks everybody for supporting me. Oh, man. So we do have a, a story from the streets after we get through this podcast today, this episode of just finishing out the, the year strong. And this is more of a pep talk than anything, you know, of what of 
it's not like Kim and I are going to give you tangible advice here, but just a little pep talk to finish out your strong of, you know, if you feel like you're stuck in a rut or you have had a couple bumps in the road for your sober journey, that you don't have to wait till the first of the year to be like, all right, it's already fucked up. I'll just wait till January 1st. Just start over today because this is one thing I know. You don't want to go into the holidays feeling like Bigfoot stick. No, that's the worst. It's the worst. And then because then it just adds to where the holidays, and especially too, if you're one who doesn't really like the holidays or these, you know, these next couple months that going, like it, you really want to go in with a good mindset so you can start enjoying the rest of 2023, the in these holidays and the in the season of change, you can enjoy it and change with it. Yeah. And you know, as sure I know my sister my sister and I were New Year's resolution girlies. And we were definitely the girlies, I'll do it tomorrow. I'm gonna start fresh tomorrow. And it was always tomorrow. Big dick procrastination energy coming off of us through for a lot of years. And you know, I, I've heard a few people, just normies, regular people are like, oh, I'm going to start this. I'm looking into even for diet and exercise. Oh, I'm looking into this meal prep kit. And but I think I'm going to wait to start till, you know, for the New Year's and get through the holidays. It's what the new that's in three months. Yeah. So you're going to keep up with bad habits that aren't making you feel good like whatever habits you want to do with your eating that's fine but I keep hearing you bringing up how I don't feel well I feel like I need to change my eating habits I need to do this and it's cool we could all clean it up with the eating but you know one of my friends wants some specific goals and then they threw in well I'm just gonna wait till the first of the year I'm like what the fuck do you know how much progress you can make in the next three months and how much better you could feel and going through the holidays like feeling great, you know, getting a jump start on it as opposed to waiting for three months because you can do a lot of damage with your diet in three months. Well, with your diet, with anything, you want to start sleeping better, start creating a, a healthier sleep routine. If you want to start working on your anxiety, you know, you can start doing breath work and meditation now. So yeah, so this goes to anything that's yes, with diet. To I want to, yes, I want you want to quit drinking alcohol, start today. Right. So it's, you know, and especially with, yeah, I wasn't just honing in on the diet and exercise. I'm not a dickhead. I know I was using it as a fucking example. Jesus, man. For me. Okay. Courtney, I want to start reading more. So I am going to go, which everybody, I finished this one bitch's book. I know Sober Vibes is by Courtney Anderson. I finished her book last week and it was. Awesome. I was so proud of my sister. I shed a couple tears in it because I was just like, just proud of her. And, you know, I was proud of her because I know my sister was not the best in school. And every year, you know, had to not to throw your business out here to the streets, but I'm gonna, my sister had to go every year. I always felt bad for her when I was younger because Courtney always had to go to summer school. And I think there was like a little bit of dyslexia that was not diagnosed so Courtney always struggled in school it just wasn't her forte and it it made me feel bad that every summer we just knew Courtney was going to summer school (laughs) we knew that's what Courtney was doing she graduated she made it through she did great but for her to write a book especially on this topic was inspiring you know your first 90 days in recovery And it just was a proud sister moment because it just, I know she had to overcome like when she was in the writing process, like it's, it doesn't, it was probably some parts of that were a little challenging and she just, she did it. She did the damn thing. So I put that book down very proud of my sister. And there were some like tips that I picked up on some things that I'm going to go back to and redo like a little bit of work. Like there's some journaling and stuff in it and parts where you can write in and kind of go along with the process. But yeah, I just finished that book by Courtney Anderson. And uh, it was really cool. But back to I want to start reading more because I kind of got off of that. I kind of got off of that hustle. 
Mm-hmm. And it doesn't make me feel good when I get off of that because I feel so accomplished after I get mm-hmm. a book read. Mm-hmm. It's just great after you read that last page and you're like, oh, fuck yeah. And you can just put that one aside to your pile that you've, that have been completed. And it's just, it makes me feel like I've accomplished something and I've learned something new or if I'm reading for fun or whatever, it's just reading's an enjoyable experience. But sometimes I get off track, which I have been currently, it took a lot for me just to even sit down and read my own fucking sister's book. Cause just sometimes my attention span is I'll have to like reread a page like four times just because yeah, like where I'm at personally. But my goal is to start reading again and get my book hustle back on. So instead of waiting to start that goal in the first of the year, I'm just going to start it now so I can go into this new year strong. Yeah. Well, thank you for the plug that I didn't even have to ask you to do. So thank you. But actually, thank you for just reading the book, because that to me means a lot for you just reading it, because you're probably the only one in our family who has read it. (laughs) I know that's right. Because don't, when we're ever, I'll be like, so has anyone read Courtney's book? And then if people tell me, yes, I'm going to revert back to page whatever, 86 and start quizzing motherfuckers. Oh, man. Like, oh, you did? Did you really? So I appreciate it because your your opinion means a lot. And like I said, when we were at the book party, I like I got the writing. Like I knew I could write after I read Grandma the note I read to Grandma. And you said to me at her funeral, at Jerry's funeral, you were like, "You wrote that?" I said, "Yes." And you're like, "That was pretty good. You're a good writer." Yeah, that was like to be honest, Corny. I'm not trying to be rude or funny right now. I'm shocked. <laughs> Because it was so articulate and be- beautifully written and read. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't know you had it in you. I learned something about you that day. So that was, yeah, you are, you know, didn't uh, give yourself enough credit all those years. And now it's uh, yeah. all come to fruition, but incredible yeah. stuff. Well, and I have to say this, because I do want to get tested. I've always wanted to get tested to see if if I did have some type of learning disability, which I'm now going to do turning 40. That's one of my goals this year. By the end of this year, I want to get that test done. But I think for anybody like school, when you don't have, you know, we had no structure growing up, especially to post divorce. So that was at age seven for me. And there, you know, when you're not, when you're not, you don't have a home where there's like homework's a priority or a parent is waking you up in the morning to tell you to get up, to go to school, you know, it's just, there was no structure. So there was no, there's no rules for us, sister. Yeah, I know. And school, I just, and I, I wasn't a fan of school cause I didn't apply myself, but yes, learning like that was hard. That's why I think the school, I won't go on a school talk, but you know, I mean, to each their own. And that's the whole thing. I I will forever remember this when I went to Schoolcraft College and we talked about this and that college counselor was like, how did you even graduate high school? Because I had to take that math placement test. And I remember that I I left there crying because I'm like, like, Jesus, dude. (laughs) Then place me in the most basic math test. Like, why would you say such a thing to somebody? Like, you know, so fuck you, Schoolcraft College counselor yeah. back in uh, circa 20 or 2000. That That's what I would just mean for anybody out there. And I did a podcast episode about the book and speaking about this. And I just think it's, you have these people who hold these positions who tell you what they think you can and cannot do based on fucking test taking. And not every brain is a good test taker, man. It's just, dude, I have no interest in math. I don't. I I do not. It does not give me a boner. I think math is trash. But guess what? For the years of working in the industry, I'm a fucking wizard when it comes to subtraction and addition. Oh, look at you. But I am because of just that knowledge of what I learned and had to do very quickly, right? 
Yeah, I'll tell you 20%. Well, I'll tell you what 20% is real fucking quick, what I should be getting in my little paw. You want to know what 25% is? 24 of a fucking bill? You want to know 18? I'm going to knock it out real quick and it'll be spot on. Right. So, so yeah. So I just think for anybody, don't like people telling you what they think you are good and good at. No, don't listen. Yeah, don't let somebody tell you what your limits are. Right. Exactly. So, so yeah, so I think reading for you, I think that is great. And that's the whole thing, right? That's one thing that you can do where you could just apply, fuck, 10 minutes a day if that's the minimum or the max you want to apply to. And that will all. Here's what I want my new routine. This is like a goal is, as we all know here and living on the L edge, Kimberly doesn't sleep. I do not sleep. So I, want to get into a sleep routine. I ordered some of that magnesium because I've been reading all the benefits of that Mm -hmm. and um, start getting my nutrients in with the magnesium because it helps with the sleep, my tart cherry juice, and then putting, having my phone locked at a certain time so I don't get that blue screen. And then right when I wake up, not grabbing for my phone and instead on my, have my book out. So right when I wake up, I'm like activating my mind. First, I get my water and coffee, but then activating my mind and read for 20 minutes as opposed to grabbing for the phone because I got a bad habit of doing that. I am guilty. I like um, that. So, you know, that's just, and that's just a small habit to, to regular people. This doesn't sound like big shit for me. It's going to be, you know, it's going to take a little dedication and just mindfulness of doing it but that's definitely a routine that I would like to get in so and it's something that I know that needs to happen for my circadian rhythm and my sleep so it's got to be done so as opposed to me like waiting till the first of the year which in the past I'd be like oh god I got to get through the holidays work's going to be crazy but blah, blah, blah. everything's always popping sometime it doesn't matter if it's the holidays if it's fucking spring, if it's summer, there's travel going on, whatever, like the time is now. So just going to start doing that so I can wake up and get rested and hopefully get some REM sleep. And so I wake up the best version of myself and start working my mind with like words and like sentences. Cause I have, I have really bad diagnosed ADHD. So it'll, I feel like too, that'll help me get centered in the morning and focused. And in a focused mindset, because y'all, this shit pops off. I mean, the other day I was getting ready for work and the downstairs kitchen faucet was on. And then I was like, what the fuck is that noise? And then I left the fucking bathroom faucet on. I go downstairs to shut off the kitchen faucet. I was like, oh, damn, I left that running because I wasn't paying attention, had eight things going on in the kitchen. Then I am like going back upstairs. I said, I thought I just turned off that fucking faucet downstairs. Oh, I did, y'all. When then I left the bathroom one running. It's just like how my brain works. So I'm constantly like fighting against myself. So I feel like starting to be focused in the morning is just going to help me be more organized, like a little bit in my mind. Yeah. And I have to say this because I'm learning more about this, about lepitin, lepitin resistance, a hormone resistance in that blue light in the morning time, you want to get sun instead of the artificial light and the blue light. So plus two, when you grab for your phone, you are then inviting a thousand people into your bedroom. Yeah. When you go and pick up your phone and then start taking on that energy, I, cause I had to break this too, especially being a new mom with the phone, because it was very easy for me to, you know, zone out or just get on my phone first thing in the morning before getting up with the dictator and to like being up all night with him, whatever. So, and to bringing that energy, if you get like a shitty email, then to a shitty email or text message, looking at that the first thing in the the morning, it's like, you just ruined your whole goddamn day. And if you would have taken care of yourself first, then bring that energy on after 10 a.m. But going back to the hormones too with women, it's good not to look at artificial light so early in the morning. Yeah, just starting, you know, get up and just do something for yourself. Or, I mean, we're all guilty. We're all guilty. So I'm going to try less, you know, something yeah. a little more positive as opposed to like, because I'm like a TikTok whore. 
And, you know, as opposed to checking out a couple of funny TikToks before I get out of bed. And since I work nights, it's, you know, my mornings, I don't have to have this regimented, like early morning routine, unless I'm like doing, working for the nonprofit, then I got to pop up. So I can kind of like leisurely, you know, I start moving about about 10. Yeah. You know, it's fine. So if you have, if you are stuck in a little bit of a rut or there's something, even not even a rut, but you're like, you know what, I want to add this too. And and we encourage you not to wait till the end of the year because that's 90, 90 days that you could be adding that habit on now and just the progress you can see within yourself of how much better you would feel in 90 days. I have to say my September, one of my intentions for September, but I started this like the last week of August. No, maybe it was like second week to last of August. Anyways, I have now completed 51 days of learning Spanish. I've done it consecutively. And oh, oh shit. Give us yes. something. Hit us with something. <laughs> oh man, now you're gonna put me on the spot and it's gonna All right, me. I'll start you up. Hola, como está? Uh muy bien, e too. Oh, mucho bien. <laughs> so well they have you like I could do a travel one or if I order Un café sin leche. You want to go to the cafe to have a coffee? I a ca- a coffee. I want to say without milk. Seen is either with or without. It's seen or cone that is with or without. Anyways, I'm learning. So oh, I'm thinking French cafe. What the fuck? Cafe's coffee. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. but honestly, I do that at nighttime on the app and there's so many languages you can learn on there, but I'm just doing it nighttime before I put away my phone and like even going back to it. And when I start doing it, it's just, I feel good because I want to, you know, I took Spanish in high school. I want to build that and it's good for the brain. So just like little and that only my lessons are five minutes each night. Like it's, you don't have to go balls to the wall. And I don't encourage anybody to add on a hundred and one things to try to improve by the end of the year, add on one. And even if that just goes back to, you know, what, I'm not going to drink alcohol from now to the end of the year. Yeah. Or smoke any crack. Yeah, or small crack. I mean, what whatever your, your uh, DOC is. <laughs> so, DOC's, DOC's triggering because then for me, that's the Department of Corrections and I was very close to having a number. Well, okay. <laughs> so let us know, slide into our DMs and let us know or email me and let us know what you are going to be. What is your thing you're going to do to... And it could be putting up boundaries with family. It can be anything of something that's been weighing on your heart and something you want to prove upon and, you know, let us know, share with us. Yeah, and, and don't waste three months of 2023, like trying to get to 2024. We got three good months of, you know, it's fall. The other day was the first day of fall and let's stop rushing these timelines and be like present and you know, take like the dates and the constraints and all of that out of it. And just, you know, every day, what do you just, what do you want to do? That's gonna, that'll make you feel good. Maybe something that you promised yourself you were going to do. If you are like a resolution or something that you said you were going to get done in 2023, it might not have gotten done yet. And, you know, just the time is now. So you can switch up anything in just one decision a switch of a mindset and get shit done and take care of yourself and do so you are the best version of yourself, you know, evolving and just making, doing, having a better quality of life. Because no matter how good someone's life is, you can always like be better. And, you know, even if it's just like a simple act of kindness going out and like connecting with a stranger. I mean, those are always like my favorite things to do. Like even going out, I watched Courtney and I, we went to out the other day. I met her in the morning. She brought the dictator to Plymouth and we had a little 
outside play date and we had fun. And I watched this one woman, there are these ladies who are spreading the word of the good Lord standing on the corner, you know, they were like preaching out there, whatever. So this one lady, she walked up to him. I swear it made me want to cry. I said something to this lady. And she's, you ladies are out here every day. She's, I'm going to go to Starbucks. Can I get you girls something? And it was these two African-American women. I think they had come in from the city. And they were standing there just like nice as fuck. And I just watched this, you know, I'm not bringing race into it. But I watched this nice older white lady walk up to them and just offer them something to drink. She went to Starbucks, brought them back a coffee because obviously they were glued to their post. And it was just like such a nice act of kindness. So I crossed the street. I saw this lady again. I said, hey, I just want to let you know that was super rad. That was like such a nice act of kindness that you did. And she's, yeah, you know, well, it's not particularly my faith or what I believe in. But yeah, they were Jehovah's. Oh, is that what they were? Yeah, Jehovah's Witness. Yes. Oh, OK. She's, but they're human beings and they're out there every day dedicated. So mm -hmm. they deserved a little Starbucks treat. I said, well, mm -hmm. fuck, hell yeah. Everyone deserves a Starbucks treat. Mm -hmm. So I just, that was very like inspiring and just like a small, I, I love when I see shit like that. Cause I do shit like that. And it's even just talking to someone and checking in with a stranger, just like if they're okay, if you don't have the means to, uh, you don't always have to just buy a stranger, if uh, someone something like it's just stopping and smiling at someone and asking them how they're doing. Cause everyone's so disconnected. That's the kind of shit I love to see, you know? So I don't know. I don't know what the fuck my point was, but I you, liked it. You were talking about acts of kindness, right? Right. Oh, yeah. Just connect, simple acts just of connect, kindness. Yeah, connecting with human beings. And again, maybe you want to be nicer to your kids, whatever the case may be. Yeah, to, to whoever. Be but nicer listen, to yourself, to your the, kids, to your community, whatever. Yeah, I don't. And this is the thing. Do you go through periods of time? That's why I said stuck in a rut, right? Or something you want to improve upon. You don't always have to be approving, uh, improving upon. You don't always have to be doing the most. But that's why I, I stated, if you're feeling a certain type of way, start now and, and don't wait, you know, because life can get stagnant. It does. And people, you know, and... <clears throat> It can get stagnant and being okay is okay too. You know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it's, we got these last three months and of the year going into the holidays, things get crazy. So more it's maybe mindfulness and before life starts sweeping everything up and kicking it up and you get into the fucking grind of the holidays, you know, don't forget about yourself and the quality of life that you want. And, you know, Courtney and I saying too is sometimes it's like you got to get ahead of it because mm -hmm. uh, shit moves fast. So I shit think mo maybe shit, shit moves fast and can take you out pretty easily nowadays yeah. with just yeah. mental health and fucking the world. Exactly. So we're just like you got to get ahead of it. And so yeah, we just want to just, you know, a little mindfulness and get ahead of it and a positive mindset. And two, when you're in if you're in active addiction or recovery, listening to this, the holidays can be, can amp up your addiction yeah. and the holidays for some people it's triggering, you know, you're going to start having Halloween and then the Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, and these are all like big times of drinking and stress with family and stuff. So just going into being aware that this time of year is fucking upon us and just getting into a good mindset. So for me, reading it sounds like the most minute thing small thing but it's going to keep me focused and like on my shit so i like have a strong holiday season and i'm not you know don't go down a rabbit hole and mm -hmm. get caught up in like the grind of work and then you just want to be i, I want to be present and just try to not spiral right exactly I want to share with you today about a new product that I love. Sober Vibes and Exact Nature have a shared mission, helping you get sober and thrive. Exact Nature's healthy, all-natural CBD products can help. They're made for changes in mood, focus, cravings, and sleep that can be a part of getting sober. Founded by a father and son, both in addiction recovery, they know these challenges firsthand and have created a line of products to amplify the hope in your journey. 
Exact Nature offers oils, soft gels, gummies, and creams. Detox for cravings, serenity for calm and focus, and Z's for better sleep. There are thousands of CBD products on the market, but only Exact Natures are made for those of us in recovery. I'm a big fan of the serenity. For 20% off your order, use code SV20 for 20% off your order at exactnature.com. That is E X A C T N A T U R E.com. The link will also be in the show notes below. You can use that code now and all year long. It's time to start feeling your best self and you can learn more at exactnature.com. Again, the link is in the show notes. I strongly recommend CBD to help you along your sobriety and recovery journey. Exact Nature now offers free shipping on all orders. Hey, I would love to share with you something that I think could work great for you. Imagine you just got sober. You're working your program, checking in with a recovery sober coach, checking in with your sponsor, maintaining your employment and thriving. Now imagine none of your closest friends or family believe you. And this is why I'm sharing this because early on in my sobriety, there was a couple of times Matt didn't believe that I was sober. So much trust is lost during active addiction and it can be hard to convince loved ones that things are different, that you're different. This is where Soberlink can help. Soberlink's remote alcohol monitoring system is designed to help you sustain a sober lifestyle while rebuilding trust with loved ones. Small enough to fit in your purse or pocket and discreet enough to use in public. Soberlink devices combine facial recognition, tamper detection, and real-time results. So friends and family know instantly that you're sober and working towards your recovery goals. As a sober coach, I really can't think of a better tool to maintain accountability, strengthen community, improve sobriety to loved ones. Now, you might be thinking like, do I really need this? And honestly, it's different for everybody. I know quite a few people who have had to use this or something like this to prove to their spouses and or family members that they are sober. This does not just affect the person who is the drinker. I mean, a lot of damage happens during your active addiction and accountability needs to take place. And with this tool, you can show that. Let's make 2023 a memorable one. Please visit www.soberlink.com forward slash sober dash vibes to sign up and receive $50 off your device. The link is in the show notes. Check it out. If you do get this device, please feel free to reach out and let me know how it has helped you in your sober journey. All right, so we have a quick stories from the street today. I mean, my sister already told me this story the other day, and I don't know how to process it. <laughs> well, we were talking about how, like, the weird situations that addiction brings you. Addiction brings you weird situations, you know, that you find yourself in that any normal person who just goes, like, to the bar to have a couple drinks and goes home would never really find themselves in. And I was laughing when she was like Courtney brought up the stories from the streets and we were just like talking about this subject so I there's clearly like a lot of stories that I don't tell my sister I mean she knows pretty much all of them but there's like this one situation that that... but look if Kim were to tell me a story that's what in my reaction I was just like oh my there's no story that Kim has told me yet where I'm like it doesn't surprise me yeah it doesn't (laughs) that she has partaked in yeah, so I I was obviously at the height of my addiction living in Denver, and I was working a bar, a very high-end bar, and as you guys know us, we always work in nice places, so I was waiting on a lot of millionaires because the place above was all residents, and on the bottom of the floor was a tequila bar and a restaurant, so... I was waiting on a lot of people. Now, I'll tell you this. Millionaires and rich people, they're weird. 
They're weird motherfuckers, especially when it comes to sex. I don't know if they've had all of it. So then they just have to get creative or what the fuck is happening. Or they just are like too busy making money and being rich and telling peasants what they need to be doing that they haven't dealt with healing their inner child or they're like not healed people. They're just really good at making money so they don't have to be civilized human beings. So I used to, my regulars throughout my whole career have always taken really good care of me. They've always taken a liking to me. I'm good at what I do. I'm back there. I'm getting people fucked up. I know how to handle people, whatever. So this particular regular was, I think he was like 70 years old. And he would come down all the time. And he always was throwing money at me. Loved to get fucked up. At this time, I was selling a lot of blow from behind the bar. And he, that 70 year old son of a bitch loved cocaine. And, uh, sometimes he would have parties back up at his place. Hey, after a shift, like when you're done, come up and have a drink. So I was familiar with like his, his penthouse and all that shit. So one night, I think he got a little bit too comfortable and he's, and it was like the time of month where my, I don't know what was happening, but a bunch of money sounded real good to me. So he was like. And this is a situation where a normal person would say no, but in my attic brain, I, he piqued my interest. So he said, are you interested in Kimberly? Are you interested in making some money? And I was like, I'm always interested in making money, man. What do you mean? And he's, well, I have a proposition for you. And I said, okay, well, do I, I'm not going to fuck you. You know, that's not going to be a thing. And he's like, no, he's like, Kim, you don't have to do any sexual act. You don't have to take your clothes off. I just need you to do something for me. And he's and I got some, you know, I got a bunch of blow upstairs and I'll pay you $3,000. And I was like, oh my God, do I have to kill somebody? Because I'm also not down for that. What is happening? So he's just come upstairs when you're done and we'll talk about it. He's come upstairs like you always do. We'll have a drink anyways. And this man like had all the finest tequila. You go up there, it was like a fucking addict's like candy land, right? So we go out there, we start partying, shit's getting weird. I was like, all right, man, what's the tea? And he had on the table three bands. So he had the money on the table and a couple bags of blow for me to take. So I started partying and getting weird. And my sister seen me in active addiction. So she knows when it's I started. the worst. Studio 54 is the worst. Courtney used to hate partying with me because at one point, if I did too much, I would just get quiet and weird. Weird. <laughs> And like lurk around. Yeah. And I never had that experience when in the day when, you know, I really loved cocaine. I never had the experience of getting weird. And so I did it. But you, but I had a roommate too, who would be the same way. Like where I'm like, Jesus Christ. Uh, Yeah. I I think that's like a true addict, drug addict behavior, you know, the weirdness. Yeah. Weird and lurk around and peek out peepholes of your door and think the aliens are coming right and so, i just wanted to talk about fucking life <laughs> courtney just wanted to talk about the kennedys and camelot like that's what was going on with her we're like what the fuck and then i just be peering around the corner with one eye staring yes. at her before. okay go on continue so i was like all right man what do you want me to do and he's well i have this thing and it's like the only way i can like truly get off and i was like oh jesus christ here we go i said i thought you said i didn't have to he's, hear me out He's like, all I need you to do is tickle me. And I was like, what in the fuck? And then I'm like, okay. So I agree. I look at the money. I look at the drugs that I can leave his place with. And I was like, okay, I can tickle you. Like, whatever. And these are not normal situations that a normal person. At this time, I was, what, for 35, 36? A 35-year-old grown up would be in. So... I'm thinking it's just tickle him in his clothes. And he goes, all right, cool. I'll be right back. So then this motherfucker comes out of his bedroom in a goddamn diaper with just his old Mr. Burns body and just in a fucking adult diaper. And then gets up on his kitchen table, which is like a massive thing, and lays there and he's, okay, we can begin. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, okay. Because now I'm like at the point of no return. So then I like was like, hold on a second. So I was at that point in my high where I was like weirded out. So then I just had to rip a bunch of shots of his tequila. I don't even think I poured him into a glass. I think I just went straight from the bottle. I was like, all right, let's do this, Kimberly. And I had to tickle this old ass man 
Mr. Burns in his diaper and tickle him as he was calling me mommy giggling until he did his deed in his diaper. And then he started sobbing. And I didn't know where the fuck to look, y'all. And I left there a little shook because I was like, holy fuck. I thought this man was like a civilized human being. I know we like to party a little bit, but clearly he has a mother fetish. Something's going on. And I have never in my life tickled a man till he came in his diaper until that day in Denver, Colorado. And I went home and I didn't tell anybody that story. I told it, I think, to my sponsor because it really it shook me. It was weird. It was fucking weird. And then I told Courtney the other day. And now I'm sharing with all of you. So the world, I mean, and sorry if that's offensive to anyone, but I was offended. But I took my money and drugs and went home. And I don't think I spoke for two days. And just weird situations from the streets that addiction will get you in. Grand, thank God that wasn't a, you know, I mean, it could have been a harmful situation. I don't know. People start getting fucked up and get weird. Like, he could have locked me in this house. Like, I've put myself in some pretty uh, dangerous situations. But that one, it wasn't dangerous. It was more like mind. Like, it fucked with my mind because it was weird. <laughs> Oh, so yes, I've tickled the man in a diaper for three thousand dollars, and um, I think about it now, and I like giggle, but it's just like that's not like real life. I don't know, but apparently he thought that I was just like okay enough to tell his deep dark secret, and he gave me some hush money, and then I did it a few more times, and then it was just like too much. I was like, this is weird. I can't do this anymore. What was it? Three times. Yeah, three. Okay, so you made $9,000 and took off a lot of cocaine. I can't. Okay, but now looking back at this story, because again, my reaction, it makes me giggle. However, doesn't it make you feel bad though for people like, like for that particular dude where it's like, what, what? happens like we don't feel bad for you because you were in addict mode of being like all right cool i'm gonna get free drugs and three thousand i don't feel bad for me i put myself in the situation fucking two more times no i'm i'm no i don't feel bad for me but do you do you looking back and sharing the story now with the good people of the world do you feel bad for that man that is how he was sexually aroused in that it's dude what happens in life yeah i something did because that's not normal like clearly i don't know i don't i'm not a doctor so i can't be like is that abandonment issues is that a mother wound <laughs> or are you just a sick fuck <laughs> those are you know what i mean or then i like my head goes to oh my god was i tickling a pedophile and he couldn't straight my mind went to a lot of places what am i enabling here with this is what he really wants to do. To, it's sick. You know what I mean? Sick people deal with sick people in addiction. So I stopped going down that rabbit hole. And then after he said, Kimberly, are you ready? I was like, fuck no, I'm done with your ass. Like I am done. I don't know what kind of sick shit you got going on up there, but I don't, this keeps getting weirder and weirder. So I'm good. And thank God I had the, but if I wasn't working and I needed to, I would have kept doing it because it would have been feeding my addiction. You know what I'm saying? But for some reason, I like snapped out of it. Or maybe it was like a week I was trying to clean up or, but I had told him no. And then he got offended and like never asked again, which then I was like, why isn't he asking me again? But I was like, I would think I was maybe having a week of sobriety where I was like, I need to clean my shit up, whatever. And then he just threw me out so bad. And I was like, no, fuck no, I'm not dealing with you anymore. This is bizarre. So, yeah, do I feel bad? That's, you know, to me, I just saw a lonely old man with some weird fucking fetishes That's and, what some, I'm... and some deep seated trauma with a shit ton of money, with a shit ton of money. And like, think of all the women who have probably tickled this guy. Oh, I'm sure there's been a lot. Mm hmm. And then the one he didn't have to pay was clearly the one who like fucking scorned him because his mother what is happening? <laughs> and then he just was sobbing after a naked baby on his kitchen table and his diaper. I was like, I'm fucking out of here. 
he asked me to change this diaper, that's it for me. Oh God. I don't know, man. I just, it's, it's weird. That's why I'm saying we, you listening today, it's going to be okay to take a few days to process the story from the streets <laughs> of what my sister just explained, because I'm still processing it. And it goes back to, because people, but, yes, I felt bad for him because one, he's like older, alone, but then I don't feel bad for him because it's, he was a mover and a shaker, blew through tons of pussy, probably broke a lot of women's hearts and is now alone with all of his money and has to pay the fucking bartender at the high end tequila bar downstairs to who is clearly struggling with addiction to come up to his fucking penthouse to tickle him with his fucking lonely ass because he's burned through people and nobody wants to fuck with him anymore. Yeah. So, I know. You know it's a devil's it's a catch 22. Yes, my side like I still think about him I was like I mean I'm sure he's in d- dead now but cuz at 70 years old you just can't rip a line like that and not ha- die of a heart attack. That shit was wild what I was watching. I was like, "Oh my god, does this guy have a death wish?" And maybe. So I felt bad for him in a sense, but I also knew too he was kind of a prick in the way he treated people like yeah. People in day to day like business, it's oh, there's a reason why you're alone, and this is where your addiction and your life and your legacy has taken you. Yep, and we and if you've worked with the Gen Pop, you you know that to be true. You just know the person's story, especially too if you waited on them in a bar situation, bar setting, like you you get it. Yeah, you know, you start being, I mean, I'm 25 years into this business and I can tell, you know, I can tell if someone's just grabbing a bite to eat by themselves because they need, they want to come eat or they're taking themselves on a little date. I can also tell a miserable son of a bitch or a mis- miserable twat, like sitting down because nobody wants to share a meal with them. Yeah. Because they've done so much destruction to people and they're just like, you know, you can just tell. I'm nice to all of them because that's my job, but you know, you just, you read people and you understand the story and every once in a while, some, for me, it's more often than not. I mean, people just will fucking trauma dump on me for Mm -hmm. out of no, for no reason. And I'm just like, I just asked you if you wanted another cocktail and then they start talking because I like to talk and then it starts getting, you know, we're just talking about like regular bullshit and then they just start going in about like their life and like really start trauma dumping. I mean, I'm working at this new place, the second job that I picked up and the waiter, he's who I work with, my partner, he's <laughs> like, God, people really love to tell you like their shit. They really do. And I was like, trauma dump on me. Yes, I know. I was like, it's happened my whole life, you know, and some days it's like, I think people like really want to connect, but some days like I'm not there to take it on. I just, can you please just tell me if you want fucking a lemon or lime with that? This is a bit much, you know, you know, the business shit's weird. It's the best, but it's weird. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And some days you're about it and some days you are not. And that one day I was about tickling that man for some money. And then a few times later, I was not, I had fucking had it with his ass. (laughs) <laughs> and that tales, is, from, <laughs> tales from the streets stories from the streets stories, stories from, from the streets. you know what we got to set up i have to set up something where like you can call in and share your stories from the streets and maybe we could play it on here all anonymous of course but i would just love because here's the thing and that's why i said to you the other day with this one like the fatima one was fun, you know, and we'll continue those stories. But stories like this of your sharing, I think that people hold in, I know that people hold in where their addiction took them to a fucking terrible place of tickling a man. You know, it brought you to a place where you could hold that on to be like, oh my God, I cannot believe I fucking did it. And it's, yeah, I mean, I make joke of it. Sorry to cut you off. I make, you know me, I'll tell my shit loud and proud, but I was like, I think after that third time I was like sobered up for the week, I was like ashamed. Like, Kimberly, is this really what you're fucking doing? Mm-hmm. Going up with some weird old creepy man. And then the next time there could be like four more creepy dudes who like to get, I'm going to put myself in like a dangerous situation, you know? And there was always like 
weirdos like hanging out up there and it just wasn't safe. So it's just like places where, you know, the dark corners of the universe where your addiction takes you, where it's just shadows lurking around in the night where people, you know, functioning people, healthy people are going to bed and getting up and going on with their day. And at night, there's a whole nother fucking realm of bullshit that's going on out there that I have seen firsthand. And it's, you know, some of these places addiction takes you, it's not for the weak of heart. And if you've managed to pull yourself out of it, and want to get out of that situation, you know, you got something that means and if you have pulled yourself out of it and are in active recovery, like doing it, then like, you're a fucking badass, man, because not a lot of people make it out, you know, at all, especially from what goes on in the nights. Yeah, what goes on and into and then the fallout of it. And that's why thank you for sharing your little tickle me Elmo story. (laughs) I was tickle me Burnsies. Mr. Fucking Burns. Because I do hope it helps a listener today to release a little bit of shame by, by, you know, laughing and being like, okay, you know, Kimberly, that's where Kim's addiction took her to one point. This is where mine and just to work on a little bit of forgiveness because that shame will fucking, that shame will eat you alive, man, if you don't start to release it in some type of way and being able even to just laugh at yourself to be like, you can compartmentalize like at the core of that wasn't me doing that act. It was my fucking, it was I was in my addicted state. And I think that's where people have to separate the two because you tickled a man that doesn't define you. Yeah. I mean, and that was like Mickey Mouse, you know, we got fucking tons of, you know, stories from the streets, but that was just one where I was like, wow, this is taking me down a bizarre road. And, you know, and then I could have gotten, I'm lucky that I, yeah, yeah. Are here today. <laughs> taking me down a bizarre road where, you know, I mean, then I like think now it's like, oh, that could have gone where it's like his bizarro friends are like, oh shit, she's doing this for you. Well, if I offer this, her this, maybe she'll do this for me. And then the next thing I know, I'm fucking out here doing weird shit, selling my body for, I mean, for money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you get addicted to the money. And then the next thing you know, you're just like, which it's a lot of women's stories. And then you end up in your, in something you can't get out of. Right. Right. You know, so I know I'm blessed in that sense, you know, so it's, it's, but it definitely could have gone that way for me. It definitely could have. And no shame, you know, if your addiction's ever taken you to have to sell yourself for, to, you know, to feed your addiction, like it's okay. That's where it takes you. It takes you to, I mean, it's really trying to take you to the depths of hell. So those are just a couple of the stops along the way. So if you have gotten out of it or want to get out of it, you just really got to forgive yourself. And those acts do not define you. They do not Mm -hmm. at all. They sure don't. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for that stories from the street, sister. No problem. I'm here. I'm an open book. I'm here to tell. And boy, do we have some stories. So, you know, man, it's but Courtney had a good laugh about that the other day. So and she wasn't. Courtney's now at the place, too, where she's forgiven herself for a lot, because I think maybe I might have used to tell Courtney things and her judgments were a little harsh, but she wasn't a healed version of herself. So really, she was just like, mad at herself and like the way she would judge me and like she wasn't trying to make me feel bad but like she would I think maybe it was just she was more like judging herself because she hadn't forgiven herself for like some of that shame and it was like maybe a little bit of a projection I see it now back in the day I used to take it on a little more harshly but the way my sister and I deal with each other it's like we're not projecting our own shit onto each other and we're just like you know well versions. Yeah. And I have to say, I mean, those beginning years for me were difficult because, you know, I mean, with you and I, you were still using, right. And it's like, I was going through my bullshit that nobody understood. So it probably did come out as a judgment. And then, you know, I apologize for that, but that's also those first couple of years are hard. And that's why too, 
that's why I will stand by and I set this in the book. Sober by is a guide to thriving within your first three months without alcohol. Plug, plug. But I said this and I stand by it. That's why I think people should wait a couple of years to be sober coaches, a couple of years to, to turn that because there's so much you have to work on in yourself to then being able to fucking sit there and help people from a judgment-free slash codependent, like non-codependency and where you do have to heal yourself. You do. Oh, yeah. 1000 percent same thing for sponsors i don't think people when they i don't think after the first year then you be a sponsor because it's you don't know what the fuck nobody knows what the fuck they're doing but like those first couple of years it's too early it's too early just because you dr- you quit drinking alcohol does not mean that you're going to fucking be healed within a year's time each year presents itself something different and you don't want to project your own bullshit onto other people who are coming up and coming up and new to the to giving up alcohol. And I yeah. really think that takes a couple of years. And for me, it took a couple of years. So I will, those were projections and to a judgment because it's like, well, why the fuck can't you be sober like I am? And it's not, that's not the case for people. So people have to yeah. go at their own pace. Not the yeah, I just, want. well, and then where I was at too, I was in, I knew that you were getting sober and I was like fully supporting it. So it was probably the, it's a very hard relation. It was a very hard time you and I were going through. Cause then it was just, cause I couldn't put myself into your, like I did, but I couldn't fully, you know what I mean? Cause I wasn't there fully for myself. So I wasn't probably the most supportive sister to what you needed at the time. And I was probably very triggering person for you. Mm -hmm. And for that, I apologize. But you know, we are, it caused a lot of conflict with Courtney and I and because she was seeing one thing her way, I was seeing it my way. And we both just like, we were missing what each other needed, and just projecting both of our shit onto each other. Now I see it. And thank God, my sister and I's relationship is where it is. But that could have been very like detrimental and that's where like family members just don't talk ever anymore again and those were yeah. some tough years and but i understand i was a fucking menace that was probably hard to watch in your first couple of years of recovery well i hated our whole family in my first couple of years of recovery. <laughs> yeah. my first couple of years of recovery because everyone was on their own bullshit and it's very hard when you get when you're the first member to fucking cut when you're the first member to stop continuing on the bullshit and stepping back and be like, I'm not going to partake. And then when you're around everybody who's partaking, it's, it's, you want to fucking put everybody in a headlock and give them a really hard nuggy and be like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. So that those first couple of years were hard and, and it's just, you're just in a different game. So that's why I, I think it's best for people to create boundaries, especially if you come from a very big drinking family, you have to take a step back and just like kind of arms length and it will work itself out how it work it, how it will work itself out. But you got to put the boundaries up because you're drinking mother, father, sister, brother, auntie uncle who will never understand what it's like to quit drinking alcohol until they do it themselves Mm -hmm. so so yeah so that's that we hope you enjoy today's episode on (laughs) l-o-t-e and great news because i'm gonna make this my mission the next time my sister and i will be on these airwaves we will be launching the merch collection. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm, going mm-hmm, down. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A little living on the L edge. A little living on the L edge. And we're launching it for Libra season because my sister and I are both Libras. October 5th is moi, my birthday. And October 16th, 15th is Sissy's birthday. Yep. Grandma's is the 16th. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We love Libra season over here. We do. We do. That's our fave. Last year, Kim and I were roaming the streets on Main Street in the Magic Kingdom for my 40th. Great trip. Yeah. Great yeah. Trip. We took court to Disney World for her 40th, and she was like literally happier than a pig and shit. We brought up this trip a couple of times. That was a great trip. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. 
Good times, good times. All right. If you need any help on your sober journey today, I have free resources in the show notes below. I also have sober coaching. You can apply to work for me. You can, if you loving Kimberly and her um, stories from the streets, reach out to her on Instagram. Her handle is in the show notes. And if you have not already, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show because those help us out as well. Make sure to check out the sponsors for September. Sister, great talk today. Love you as always. Love you too. All right, everyone. Keep on trucking and stay healthy out there. Bye. Bye.